Yep, I'm good to go. All right, guys. No, no. no. All right, guys. This is my 1% podcast interviewing Brandon. You don't know how to start. <laughs> anyway, guys, yes, my mum <laughs> is taking over the podcast today. Um, so welcome to the podcast, and we've literally just stuck it up now. <laughs> Super raw, um, but we are going to put a bit of a timer on because... Uh, we'll talk forever. We'll talk forever. So we're just going to do 25 minutes? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Mum's going to take control. 25 minutes is all hers. Okay, I often watch Brandon's, well, I watch all of his podcasts, um, and I often see him ask questions to people that he's interviewing um, about, you know, them, where do they start? And he always does, sort of does that little talk of, well, where were you at high school? Um, and I think maybe some of you don't know, um, actually, Brandon's thought on sort of his life from sort of high school time. So, um, yeah, tell us a little bit more, Brandon. What drove you to sort of the place you are now? What was that starting thing of in your um, your secondary year school time? I think it all started probably way before that. I think growing up with you and dad, it was always, we were always outdoors. We always kind of had, yeah. a, a, like from day one, like I was playing with dogs. We had horses, like all this sort of stuff. So I think kind of my... It's not really sporting, but body awareness and getting to know kind of people. Like, and I was always talking to older people at the yard and things yeah. like that. So I think it all began, like, it started from, like, we had that conversation last night. I think there was things that that happened in my life that I didn't even remember. Yeah. Um, so I think it all stemmed from that. But I wasn't sporty at primary school at all. Um, I think I was pretty unhealthy, like, <laughs> golden nuggets and... <laughs> I was a fat yeah, little kid. Yeah, you liked your food, you did, yeah. You were a chubber. And then when I kind of got to, kind of, I think when you and Dad split, that's when you moved to the yard, and that's when we decided to get some kayaks, yeah. or you decided to get a boat, which I thought was going to be a jet ski. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then that's when we got kayaks, we started getting on the river and... Well, we live right next to the river, so it was like I hadn't done really anything on the river, so I thought it was a good time to actually get a, a cheap way to get on the river, really, get some kayaks and get out there. And yeah. And led from there. Yeah, and then obviously Chris, who just lived down the road from us, had a massive kayaking background, um, and he kind of taught me how to roll and taught me to go in a straight line and all that sort of stuff. But then I was playing rugby as well. Um, horse riding still at the time still yeah. horse riding um, still playing rugby and it kind of got to that point where kayaking just took over and I enjoyed it the most I did have to make that decision I remember telling dad that I was like I'm not yeah. playing rugby didn't <laughs> rugby yeah that, that didn't go down well <laughs> and then yeah I think ever since that I made that commitment you were it's been really nice you being here um, and obviously every evening we've all three of us have sat down and we've talked about things but you literally from 11 years old every weekend she was running me <laughs> up and forward to Nottingham like two yeah. hours there two hours back um some days it was to Wales some days it was pretty much to Scotland <laughs> and then the next week it was like France or whatever it was it was it was every weekend since I was like 11 12 it was running around after me and yeah and that was it really that was it and then that stemmed into kayaking becoming like a full-time thing um, which took me around the world which was amazing and I think yeah I think I mean at school I think when you left school and you went to college um, to study I think you're away a lot and you could do some work online which you didn't I don't think did a lot oh, I didn't do any oh, okay. I thought you did some <laughs> no. but um, I think that gave you more education traveling yeah definitely than what you'd have got just yeah. being at school or at college and yeah I'm glad I had kayaking and at the time period that I did because I, I struggled at school but I it it put me down a lot. Um, it did make me feel a long time that I was just stupid. And I knew I wasn't because I grew up in an era where like you're dyslexic, you just struggle with things but you still feel stupid. I know that sounds... Yeah. You always feel like behind because you're clearly in the bottom set of everything um, and all your mates are in a smarter set and above you. Um, and it did just make you feel a bit shit. So kayaking was that kind of thing that gave me a lot of confidence in myself. 
Um, something you could do well at. And something that I was good at. Yeah, yeah really something good. that I was good at. Um, because school didn't really give me anything that I was good at. <laughs> when you were, t was it were 12 or 13, you got picked for the GB team, junior team? Yeah, like yeah. at 13 years old. So some, from 13, I was being trained by, well, I was hanging around with the best of the best. Um, and then obviously that just stemmed from there, really. But yeah, I think that was it. Yeah, really. I think, and I think the only thing I can remember is you feeling when you decided kayaking, when we went to the Olympics, you took to them all to do a demonstration and realised then that the Olympics weren't going to fund it. I think that kind of made you decide, didn't it, actually, I follow white water and become a bum and a kayaker all my life, or do I change career now? I don't know if that was a conscious effort, was it? or? Yeah, I think it was just, I think it kind of just slowly drifted out of my life as well. Because I was... When I, was, I say a kite bum, I mean that in the nicest possible way. It's, it's a <laughs> wonderful world to live in if that's what you choose. Yeah, yeah. and like obviously I did the podcast with Nick, so this yeah. is literally the podcast after Nick's. So you can be a professional athlete in it and you can do extremely well with it. Um, I think for me it was just... I, do you know what it was? I did start going to the gym like at an early age sort of thing. Not a clue what I was doing, like just after school and things like yeah. that. And then... I was kind of working at Hollister part time whilst I was. I think is I was college and high school. I didn't know what to do, didn't know what to do. And I remember I went to that Biosynergy photo shoot. Yeah. They were sponsoring me for kayaking, and all these people were really ripped and looked incredible. Looked incredible, yeah. and I was like, "What do they do?" And they They're were all different fields, weren't they? Yeah, but they were all personal trainers. They were all personal trainers, and that was kind of the moment where I was like, "So if I can, I can continue to kayak and be a personal trainer," so I was like, "Sick, I'll do that." And then it kind of just, then I just kind of didn't carry on kayaking. That yeah, was it. Into the gym. Yeah, and then I just kind of went all into the gym. And And I think for you at the time, I don't know, it's, as, as a parent you see your children differently and you think they're coping with things, but maybe they're not if they don't talk to you. But maybe they don't know how to talk to you at that age. But I think kayak defined who you were. And I think you said that to me once. And then I think in that transition time, you lost yourself a little bit. Mm, and then I think then you found you replaced the gym and training and that sort of then just started to define you and you kind of made that step over from one to the other. That's what yeah. helped no, me as a 100%, parent. No, yeah. 100%. It was that moment where f f from 11 years old you were known as the kid that was kayaking. Yeah. And I think at an early, I guess you can and relate. you got you a place in college. You got me a place in college, yeah, because otherwise I, f I wouldn't have got in, I failed school. Yeah, so I wouldn't have got, got in. No, it got you into college, being um, part of a GB team. And yeah, I think it was just that weird transition period where I was like... Well, you went to Colorado to college there, didn't you, for a while, and then that, just, that wasn't really for you. Education just wasn't for me. No. Like, education just wasn't for me. Um, Not and e even of how it's presented no, in and the even, English schools. Even studying the PT course, I thought that was shit. Yeah. That was horrible. I yeah. hated that. But I think again, because you're dyslexic, and I can relate to that, it actually it challenges you, and it starts to make you feel those doubt again. It's not that it's a bad course; mm. you just start to question yourself yeah. because you struggle with it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it was what well, every time I tried to I tried to prove myself wrong with education. I was like, I can do this, and I was like trying to force it the whole time, and I was like, why? Yeah, you don't Why? need to, because yeah. you can be educated in a field that you love and just move out into yeah, yeah, that's it. Like, I still don't know, I don't know, six times tables. <laughs> six, twelve, eighteen. Do 80. you need them? <laughs> no, exactly. For bodybuilding, as long as you can count to 30 reps, you're okay. <laughs> yeah, you um, don't need me on that. No, um, I think that was, yeah, I think I just went, it was probably that, do you know what it was? It was after the World or European Cup in Plattling, when okay, I was a yes. senior. yeah. And then, I, then that was the transition where I was like, oh, I started doing the PT course. I was working at Hollister in the nightclub. And Do I really want to carry on? Yeah, it just yeah. drifted. Honestly, I think there was no like moment where I stopped. It no. just drifted off. Like it just, I just transferred into the gym. Yeah, and I think you're at ki you, you sort of joined kayaking at a great time. Where it was really booming. It was really changing. All the people in it were coming up with new things, new moves that hadn't been done before. Mm. And then it did plateau off a little bit, I think. Yeah. Um, and now it's clearly, you know, growing. Um, yeah. Again, there's obviously younger, new people all coming in. And new things will be developed yeah. and done and new materials for boats and everything else. Mm. Um, but I think you had sort of probably a really good, probably yeah. one of the best times um, yeah, in kayaking. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was good.
Yeah, so I just thought we'd um, just fill you in a little bit on, um, on Brandon's younger years, because I'm sure he hasn't shared it all with you before. Yeah. Um, you still got time. You can't. You're rap. You're oh, bad. At, you're bad at podcasts. You have to time. keep going. Oh, okay. You so, got 15 minutes oh, left. Okay. So give us some more what about <laughs> you. <laughs> a bit more depth. What made you change from riding horses every day to just go? I can be in a boat. Or didn't you think about it? Just naturally, you flowed from one into the other. I think that was young, though, wasn't it? Oh, very young. Yeah. We were like, eleven. But I was still kind of, I think, I was still involved. I wasn't like... Well, I think maybe when you had that big accident riding. Yeah, that probably shocked me yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, probably set you back a bit. Yeah. yeah, and I think as well it was like, I, I don't know if it was a whole gender thing as well. Yeah, it's mostly girls at that age. It was, yeah, and I think maybe, again, I think if I had like a role model in horse yeah. riding or if Dad was more involved with it than he was, but then also like... I think if I made that decision to take horse riding more seriously, I don't believe that... I think this is where like I couldn't have been coached by you. No, I'd have no, had to go not. to different separate lessons oh, yeah. and things like that. I think that's probably where... I think I was at that point where that needed to happen, potentially, like 11, 12. Yeah, you needed a role like, model in your life because you, know, you didn't really have your dad as a role model. Once you gave up rugby, he wasn't there every day. And I think the male figures in kayaking, they mm. were good role models for yeah, you. Yeah massive yeah mm. and then even yeah. to this day like i said on nick's podcast yeah i was like man honestly every time i speak to like nick or if i spoke to bren or dane or whatever whoever it is in that field or even above like i'd still feel nervous like i'm talking to a celebrity because you like, followed them for so many yeah, years yeah it's and a bit sudden, weird you went to stay at their home and kayaked with them and yeah, yeah it was a bit i always get like oh it's a bit like <laughs> a bit shaky because you looked at that looked up to them since you were like 10 11 years old yeah, you're, uh, some of them your idols yeah. when you were little but yeah. it is literally looking like imagine it's like you meet ronnie coleman you live with ronnie coleman yeah. it would be the same yeah. thing it's the same yeah. caliber yeah, it's exactly it the same caliber yeah. yeah they were sort of leading world and like if that happened to you you would be like fucking hell like pinch like, yeah this yeah. is for real yeah yeah. So no, it was um, it was good, and I think um, yeah, I think once you sort of you went to the states and then you came back when you went to college there and you came back, and I think that's really one then what put you into doing your personal training courses and your studies um, mm. here, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. And I think there was forward. like a lot of it's like saying what was that moment? I don't think there was a moment. No. I think it was a compounding effect of lots of different things that allowed me to be like right, okay. Um, because I don't think, like, even running your, like, I don't think you want to say, like, when you coach and you run your own business, how full on it is every day in your mind. And, because I think I was quite, I wouldn't say I was lazy, but there's no way back then I could do any of this sort of stuff. No. But I think, I don't know, I don't think. Well, I think you started the right place. You started the ground up with yeah. the gym opening. You know, that big gym that you started with. Yeah, yeah. Pure. You know, you were doing all the real groundwork to get in there. Um, and you were there for that a couple of years. So I mean, hot. worked a lot of hours. Um, then you went into London, and um, and again, just started. Didn't know anyone. I thought it was quite a brave thing to do. You knew no one. Started again mm. in Covent Garden. Um, yes. Yeah. So you've really done the groundwork. I think that's for important. many years, and but I think that's what you have to do. In whatever you do, you know, I think you mm. have to do those. You know, the treadmill going on and on and on, never getting off it. Yeah. Um, to learn so much from that too, yeah. Yeah, you do. I, I don't believe that you can. I think it's the same as you. Like I, like I always say, like you work in three jobs. When we were at the yard, used to do the yard, get up at five a.m., do the horses. Then you'd get me ready for school. Um, go do my PT clients. Go do your PT <laughs> clients. Then you'd have yoga, or you were at the. I think don't know if you were at the gym at that standpoint, or you're doing private clients. You know, so in private clients, then yeah. Yeah, and then then, then it would come home. Yeah, yeah, and then but then you'd pick me up. Then we'd have the evening lot of riding. Yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, like it didn't stop, and that was like from five a.m. all the way through. So I think actually, like in your subconscious, your I think from even when you were doing that sort of stuff and the work that has an effect on me now. Like, or even then, like when I was like, right, you got all these leaflets and you got to open this gym. That's it. You've got to do the, I think, got to do the foot, you've got to tread the, you know, you've got to walk the walk, you have. I think when you're a young age, you don't actually, you don't process it, no. but you absorb that your parents are a hard worker. Yeah. So then yeah, when that time comes, you're just like, this is very normal because my mum did that. 
Yeah, and I think, you know, maybe always having animals, it was always like up and out in the morning, animals have got to be done. Well, you had a responsibility, I think. It, you yeah. said that last night, the night before. I think that was the good thing about when you have animals and horses yeah, and it you does. have, or like you said, like kids tidying their bedroom. Yeah, it like, gives them pride. They have to learn a pride in what they do. And you carry that with life, don't you? Mm. It's about, you know, having pride in your bedroom space, you know, in your animals, the jobs you're doing around animals. I think that's a big learning thing for children. Yeah. It is. But yeah, that was it. Right? I don't think there was any one particular moment. There was definitely moving here. I was like, screw, screw this lockdown stuff, I'm out. But I had no intention of ever staying, uh, not staying yeah. here. No, again, I think it was quite a brave thing to do. Yeah. yeah. I remember we had that conversation when you were saying like, Okay, the, everything's shutting down, all the gyms are shutting, the only ones that open are in Dubai and Scotland. Where do I go? And I was like, <laughs> well, if it was me, I'd be going to the sun. Yeah. Um, and that was it. Yeah. yeah that would, opened another door. That was it, yeah. yeah. And then I came back and I started, I was like, alright, let me, I just remember taking pictures of my passport, sending it to someone, being like, this is sketchy. <laughs> and like, right, you got your visa, let's go. Yeah. Um, and that was it, really. And then yeah, that was good. We're now the third year. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? it Third is. year living in a sandpit. <laughs> it's quite a spectacular sandpit, though. It's good, it is good. So, it is, yeah. So, no, I don't think there was ever, like, specific moments growing up that led to this moment. I think it was just... I always talk about, like, again, like that 1%, right? It's just yeah. the, the, the name of this podcast. It was just... It's just the compounding effect of everything in your life brings you this moment. Yeah. And we sat down with me, mum and Steph last night and I just asked mum, I was like, do you have any regrets? And uh, we all know the answers that we shouldn't have regrets, but there was, we obviously, like, we don't need to discuss, there was very personal stuff, like, I got a bit teary last night, and, <laughs> but there was stuff that mum said that she not doesn't regret, but she wished it panned out a little bit differently, quote unquote, and so yeah, there's no real regrets, or there's no real decision that led me to doing what I'm no. doing today at I think, all well, you know all the things that go on in your life you have to learn you learn from them don't you mm. they're not always the best the wisest but you learn from them and I think that's the most important thing for anyone any age that actually yeah. um, whatever you're going through um, whether it's good or bad take something one thing good away from it even if it's something not to do again <laughs> yeah yeah I think that I makes think a difference. That was the moral of the story last night, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah, your parents did this, don't do that. Yeah, learn from it. Yeah, well, that was a bad thing my parents did. Yeah, I won't do that yeah, to mine. That, yeah. But no, yeah. But so. life is tr a trial and error. You know, you haven't done oh, it before. You, a lot. So you just got to go out there and do the best you can. Yeah. I think this is the whole thing when people want everything to pan out the way that they vision it. And That's I'm like... Life it really won't happen like yeah. that and the same as like I talk to clients on a daily basis like a lot of clients now working towards photo shoots and things like that and I promise you when you achieve something it's n it's bittersweet you'll feel great for 24 hours and it's fucking done it's regardless like, do like, now? that's the same thing I spoke to Nick I spoke to multiple people that have done extremely extremely yeah. well in their life and you have like you yeah, could you could name drop some big oh. people yeah like my mum <laughs> My mum used to be a recruiter for Gladiators, the TV show, back in the fitness industry. She's personal trainer, still does some very big names in the industry or in the television world into the, even down to going to fucking Disney and all this, like all these sorts of yeah. things. Obviously, we can't even name them. Um, but you told me stories and things like that and like, they're no happier at the level they're at. No, it's the journey. Yeah, enjoy the journey. Whatever it's so it is. cliche. Yeah, it's it is so, so cliche. It's so true. Yeah. yeah. I know I always say that teaching yoga. I say to people, you know, it's not about the pose. It's the journey with your body to get to it. Yeah, it's so um, true. Yeah, And our life's point. like that. It is, yeah. Yeah, it's a good point. I always yeah. think that when you learn to like, it's little things, like when you learn to squeeze your quad and it fucking hurts. Yeah. And you're like, oh my God, that's what it feels like. It's that's like an epiphany where I was moment. That's going to, yeah. Um, and I think that's like anything you learn though, isn't it? Whatever, whatever you start and whatever you learn, you're learning, you kind of go through the motions to start with and you don't kind of really get it, but you're doing it, but you're kind of observing it from mm. the sort of outside in. But then all of a sudden you have those moments where, ah, yeah, got this. Mm. This is how it should feel. And I think that's with anything you do. Yeah. yeah. Especially when, obviously when it's physical, whether it be, you know, from dance to whatever sport it is. Um, yeah. training it is definitely those moments of so it's just enjoying the journey and learning more about yourself on that journey yeah because it never ends it really never. doesn't like no, i think people doesn't. think like 
oh like when you learn a squat you've learned a squat and I'm like no like every time you squat is different yeah look for every, the depth look for something more each yeah, time yeah and every time you feel something different or your body's mm. because you're purposely changing your body yeah every time you squat it's gonna be different yeah. because you're building more muscle over yeah. time or the mobility is different or you ate this a little bit differently and because it's affected this movement like it gets so yeah, I mean, specific I was, but I, I do in yoga very much but you know when you breathe in it's asking your body when you breathe out it's just seeing if it'll just give you that little bit more yeah and I think if we use that through life we don't none of us do but if we actually use that through life actually you know being a whole in the moment um, mm. which is very hard it's to difficult do. and we and I think this has been the don't. nicest thing about having you here like I messaged Cam and I saw, my mum actually met Cam so my coach in the gym yeah, that was which was nice that was really nice yeah, um, was. and obviously everything from that side of things because obviously I'm not a natural athlete so it was nice like my mum's been in the industry now she knows a lot from a drug side of you and all this sort of stuff but it was very reassuring and actually she spoke to Cam kind of separately for a bit of time as well like um, and that was nice to me like so my mum now know now who is yeah. doing this to me but <laughs> it's I don't know what were we going on about I'm gone um, I don't know you were just saying about actually your journey and oh, being in the, the moment the pro- being in the moment yeah and it was like I, I said to Cam I was like I feel a bit mentally drained at the moment can I take time off and obviously he knows from me he's, from me, he's like if you're saying that you need it and it's been really good just to pull back a little bit and just because my mum's only here for the next couple of days now but just to spend some really good quality time and just in the evenings we just sit we watch a bit of tv we turn the tv off and we sit and chat and it's nice it's, it's nice, nice and yeah. obviously it's the first time as well like steph and my mum are kind of together as well which is it's, it's a really bit nice it is it's kind of getting to know each other a little bit too, yeah it's a, good. and also yeah, for me nice. like that's a big deal because obviously like my mum's my mum everyone that knows me like you're my rock and like the the reason the reason why you get up every day, if I'm honest, like, fuck, like, that's what you've taught me and that's the person you've become in my life. So when you meet the other the other woman in my life, you're like, oh, my God, like, please like each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, it has been really, it's been really, really nice. So that just being in the present with both of them. Ooh, that looked like a bird hit the window. <laughs> but just being in the present with them both is nice. Um, so yeah, it's been good. It's been nice because we've had some psycho- in-depth chats, haven't we? So I kind of get to know Steph as well, which has been really good. Really nice. Yeah. yeah. So no, it's been um, it's been good. Is there anything? Oh, hang on. We've got three minutes fifty seconds. Oh no, I think you need to real reveal. It's your interview. Me interviewing you. You need to reveal some more stuff. What am I reviewing? You have to ask questions, that's the problem. Oh, okay. Right, you've got enough time for like something short and sweet. Okay, give me something in your kayaking that really drove you to want to be a winner of the worlds. Was it something internal, something external, other people? I think it's it's more internal. I, do you know what it was? I think a long time it's because I've, I was never good at school and I was good at that, I was like, if I can win something, if I can win this, it'll give me satisfaction and to prove myself that you can. And also a bit of a middle finger as well. Yeah. A bit of a middle finger to be like, I'm not stupid. I am good at something. Even um, though probably no one else thought that. It was just no your one else, personal yeah. feelings. It was your own yeah. demons that you had yeah. to fight. But again, that's the same reason I've, I've turned around now and... Um, perfect timing that's the same reason um, that's the same reason now I decided right I just want to take bodybuilding more seriously and I'm right, right I do want to be a pro athlete in body, but I want to go from a kayaking pro athlete into a bodybuilding pro athlete I know genetically I do not have the capabilities to go all the way to be the best at Mr. Olympia right I know that and I'm fine with that but to tick some milestones off in a career yeah yeah, and I think that's important. You have to have something to work towards. And lots of times in your life, you'll find that actually, well, where am I going now? I've done this. Where am I going now? But it's always looking for those opportunities because mm. they're always there along the way, whatever you're doing, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so I think, yeah. I think it's more of just a... It's always been to prove that to myself, I think. Yeah, which is good because you don't need to prove anything to anyone else. No. But then I think you were like... 
But when a, you're young, I think you do. We yeah, I think when I was probably kayaking, nature. it was probably like, yeah, let me prove you that like, your out. ego, let me prove that I am yeah. the best sort of thing. But that's just um, being young. But also, like again, like, if I'm honest, like if you don't have a little bit of an ego, I don't believe you ever can. I think you have to ultimately really believe that you're blessed and potentially have like every athlete. Look at boxers; they oh, fucking oh, won the believe, fight yeah. before they've even entered, and Absolutely. they'll get. Yeah. I think with any thing you do in life, you just have to believe and. Well, if you don't believe, you've lost. You're kind yeah. of faking it in a way, and you can't get to the top of anything by faking it. No. 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 Which is quite a good one to end on, probably. You do you know how these podcasts end? No. So I don't see. I've taken it over. She, she, now I've got to give it back. Watch, she watches the podcast, but doesn't watch the most important part at the end. So we've got a minute left. Oh yes. Oh god, I forgot about that bit. Excuse me, everyone. I've got to go. <laughs> no, what do was that? I do. What have I got? A question for the next person that comes on, and I don't. No, know you I watch the Diary of the CEO too much. We're not that big. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, um, no, it's if so. Obviously, it being the one percent podcast, if there's one thing. Yep that you can tell someone or help someone that's going to move them 1% further forward tomorrow, okay. what would that be? So that would be the question I asked for me. Okay, so I've got to ask it to you. What would be <laughs> <laughs> the one thing, the 1% that you would advise other people to do? See, I don't even know the answer now to give oh, you this plea. Let's put him on the spot, isn't it? I was thinking you were going to put me on the spot, but no, come on. Time is ticking. I think it is just that 1%. Yeah, well, what is I that 1%? I think it's just, it sounds very cliche, but be a little bit better than yesterday. But also understanding that it's not just about yesterday, it's not about last week. Sometimes you need to take that bird's eye view back and that's the end. In six, <laughs> in, in six months' time, if you look back and you're like, are you in a better position as you are now? than you were six months ago sort of thing yeah and if you can answer yes then I'm just like keep going yeah you're taking those little steps so it's not just about a day a week two weeks it's like has it been a better month yeah are you in a better position a month later two months later three months later and that does come down from like a compounding effect like if you have 20 days in the month that are amazing don't worry about the 11 whatever month you're in yeah. the 11 that are shit you yeah. might be ill, you might be whatever, you might have family you issues, have but I think if you can out. say that consistency of 20 versus 11, yeah. vice versa, a year, if you have 10 great months, who cares about two bad yeah. months? Yeah, I guess it's like if someone wants to run a marathon, well, you haven't got to do it tomorrow, so actually take one step at a time, and eventually you've done that distance. But that's the problem the world we live in now. Yeah. We want it now. Yeah, it's true. But so. it's not, that's not the way to succeed. No. So I think that's a good answer. Well there you done. go. Thanks, guys. Um, <laughs> Thank super, you. <laughs> super short, super easy. Turn the timer off, and see you in the next one.